Hello and welcome. This is the Market Wrap. I'm Agam Akhil. Well, it's not been the best of starts to the week, especially uh, given while the benchmarks did decline by, to a certain extent, we did see further weakness, a lot of intensifying pressure when it comes to the broader markets. But I'm going to stick to the benchmarks at least for the time being. And as far as the NFT is concerned, as you can see, we've seen about two tenths of a percent of cut. And while we do have a little bit of recovery in UPL, and if you consider something like a Yes Bank and Mahindra and Mahindra and leave those out, we really don't have too much to go for in terms of momentum among the stocks which have advanced in trade. However, on the losing end there is weakness across ONGC, Aisha Motors and JSW Steel, all of which lost out over 3%, followed by stocks like Z Entertainment, Vedanta, Bajaj Auto, which lost out over 2%. Uh, the picture however in the broader markets is much worse and this is what I was talking about, perhaps where I can draw attention to. Two gainers for three losers and well some recovery seen in uh, some, some of these unusual names to show up on the gainers end, so Generigation, Suzlon, Divan Housing Finance, Vakrangi, all of these have been known to be extremely problematic of late, but they're all seeing advances. On the other hand, Cox and Kings loses another 20%, followed by World Reliance Power, which is of course a penny stock at this point in time. Glenmark Pharma is something that we will be talking about, as is the case for Imami as well. And of course, Hexaware Technology is looking at further pressure now, down 5%, perhaps a bout of profit taking and longs and winding. But on that note, I'm going to get in our market editor Neeraj Shah for a perspective here. Uh, Neeraj, your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, uh, nothing sort of a day, if you if you will. But uh, yeah. we defended some key levels. If technical analysis is anything to go by, yeah. that 50-day moving average and that 50% retracement from those levels. Mm. So both those levels were pointing towards that 11,650, 670 mark, and I think we've defended those well. So not bad. Uh, we cracked below the 50-day moving average and then came back again for the Nifty Bank. So mm. that's not bad signs. The volumes were okay today. Nothing compared to the expiry last week, but not bad. Considering the expiry week, I think we've done okay. But I think most people that we spoke to during the day today are speaking about how uh, having seen such a, uh, well, a bit of a sideways movement to a downward movement in heavyweights like Reliance, etc., we might expect them to give support in the expiry week. And therefore, mm. maybe, just maybe, the expiry may not be as bad. We have the G20 coming up. I think the global markets right. would be a bit kind to themselves ahead of the G20 summit and then next week we have our own budget so maybe our markets will be a bit lackluster sure. and not fall too much ahead of that as well so two key events uh, before there being the earnings season kick starting in full course, steam yes. so I reckon uh, maybe sideways uh, but then I, I, it's difficult to predict, really. Just Fair watch enough. out for the heavyweights, I reckon. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Neeraj, thanks for that thanks perspective. So, uh, well, we'll be watching out for heavyweights. Uh, but on that note, uh, let's talk about one very large pharma name, and that's Glenmark, because uh, we did see a very sharp cut there, and largely on account of some challenges with respect to the US FDA. I'm going to get in Darshan Mehta to talk to us about that. Darshan, what are the updates here? Yeah, so basically what happened was over the weekend, uh, they got a uh, con complete response letter from the US FDA for one of the key drugs uh, it's a branded drug that they want to launch called Rialtris. Uh, now, what the letter from the US FDA says that they cannot uh, approve this drug because there was certain deficiency in terms of the API that was used and also some bit of issues with the manufacturing plant. Now, there is no issue as far as uh, uh, you know, you know, clinical test uh, supporting the data is concerned. It's basically ancillary issues, and Glenmark believes that you know in the next uh, six to nine months uh, the resolution will come in. But nevertheless, uh, which the drug which was supposed to be launched uh, very very soon is getting delayed now. Macquarie says that uh, no deficiency uh, uh, that is there that will support uh, uh, you know uh, support Glenmark at this point of time but the launch delay will now get delayed into the first half or second half first half of FI21 as opposed to what is was expected right now. They will have to now incur much more cost as far as the launch is concerned and in case uh, any kind of uh, they find any kind of out licensing deal that could reduce the burden but that is certainly they will have to share the profits there. GFC Sec also agrees to the view. The anticipation was 70 to 100 million dollars potential upside peak sales from this drug, but they will need to spend more to scale up this drug before being able to sell this off. But uh, nevertheless, uh, this delay is negative for Glenmark. Sure, and of course, the stock's taken a knock. Dashan, thanks for joining us and getting us those details. Glenmark down around nearly 8% in trade today, but on that note, I'm going to get in, uh, well, 
uh, Yash Upadhyay to get in a list of two other stocks that he is uh, looking at. Uh, the, Yash, what's on your list today? Um, so, Imami was in focus in today's day of trade and mainly on account of the big block deal that happened in uh, in the early trade. So, close to 3.27 crore shares or nearly 8% of the equity, 7.2% uh, of the equity, that changed hands in a big block deal. Now, we haven't confirmed it individually, but uh, the promoters of the company, they have come on another media outlet and confirmed that they have sold. And right from the word get-go, the stock was under pressure. It managed to close about 7, 7.5% lower. Uh, it would be interesting to see, uh, Agam, who are the buyers once the Baldi data gets updated yeah. post-market hours. Uh, but that apart, Lupin was also in focus and for reasons completely opposite to that of Glenmark. So there was an upgrade of, on Lupin from Credit Suisse. Now they have upgraded their rating uh, from underperform to outperform and have also hiked the target price to 860 from 800 on the stock. Now concerns with respect to one of their drug, which is called Solomeg, the ramp up and its margins contraction, they, according to the, the brokerage firm, have completely played out and they expect a sharp increase in free cash flow in free uh, cash flows as well as a, an, an increase uh, in their cash flows and expect the company to become close to debt free by the end of fi20 so these are some of the key triggers uh, which was which resulted in the big move today and the stock managing to close to and a half percent higher it had surged at one point close to 740 but it came off from the highs of the day but still ending in the green by close to three percent uh, so lupin uh, was uh, in focus because of that sure yes thanks for getting us those two stocks and the updates there. So one gainer and one very large loser in uh, Imami. Imami, of course, is something that we'll be watching out for. As Yash suggested, uh, the bulk deal data will tell us about who well, uh, the, the buyers are. But on that note, it's a wrap on the markets. But lost more lineup, stay tuned to Bloomberg.